Yagao is the preferred model maker of the giant Chinese construction equipment company XCMG. This model is the XCA220 mobile crane. And we can see that Yagao is stated as the model maker on the box. I think we can assume that the 220 indicates that the capacity of the real crane is 220 tons. And this one is a five axle all terrain machine. Cutting the tape and lifting the lid, we can see that the parts are wrapped in soft paper, but no instructions are supplied with this model. As usual for the initial assembly, we'll just get the crane ready for the road. And the first thing we can fit are two magnetized engine covers. These are metal and they easily slot into place. Next, I think we'll decide to add on the two hooks that come with the crane. And we'll start that off by using a key on the winch drum to take off the rope. The winches are good because they've got a positive spring action with a brake. And here we see the two hooks reeved on. There is a hitch point at the front of the cab and you get a tiny steel pin to put in it. As you can see, that pin is so small, there's no point trying to use salami sized fingers to get it in. No, we need to be much more clinical. So here we're using a pair of tweezers. And I guess that in real life, the tweezers they use must be very large. To fix the hooks, we've used a chain, but that's not included with the model. Next, we've got some metal work to install at the top of the crane. And that comprises of two small platforms. And there's a set of handrails to fit on each one. There's also a much longer piece of handrail to fit on the top of the body. Starting at the cabin, there's a structure and a pair of tanks modelled. And as we move down the chassis, we can see that the drive shafts are modelled also. But they're not quite continuous. At the back, there's a couple more tanks. And the road tyres have a decent tread pattern. On top of the cab, there's a large rack. And there are mirrors and very thin windscreen wipers. There's a small badge above the grille and the lights look good. There are sharp graphics and a nice tread plate on the step. There are more nice graphics on the side of the body. And the outrigger posts. And it's always nice to see branding in the sidewalls of the tyres. There's another protection rack on top of the crane cab. And there are more sharp graphics applied to the crane body. At the back we have a spare wheel. And the lights have plastic lenses. With more sharp graphics adding detail. That also applies to the boom where the small graphics are perfectly legible. At the front of the crane body there are textured steps and handrails. And up on top, the platform also has texturing. The rope supplied on the drums is of decent quality. A particularly nice touch is the spooling drum because it has cable loaded on it. Looking at the boom top, all of the pulleys are separate and they're made of metal. Included with the model are spreader plates for the outriggers. And the outriggers themselves are very detailed with smooth looking pistons. And there are tiny graphics printed on the outrigger beams. Detailing behind the carrier cab is of a high standard with nice mesh grills, and there's also a variety of textures and a fixed in place ladder. The included fly jib is metal, and it has some good quality lattice work. It is a luffing jib controlled by a hydraulic ram, with the colour of the plastic ram jacket being slightly off. There is a large metal hook supplied, and it's got three separate sheaves inside. You can also rotate the hook to get a different angle, but it is really quite stiff. The other hook supplied is a single line hook, and it's a heavy metal piece. Starting with the chassis, each axle has independent steering, and the range of movement you can achieve is really good. With each axle having independent steering, it's possible to replicate any steering mode that you want, including crab steering. The other piece of nice model engineering on the chassis is independent suspension on each axle. So let's put the crane out onto the test track, and we'll start by giving it a bit of up and down and testing the suspension. After enough of that, we can move the crane along, and it rolls nicely in a straight line, helped by its heavy weight. 
Let's now set the steering axles so we can do a reasonably tight turn. And that works well enough, although at this stage not all of the axles are now grounded properly. And finally, everybody likes a bit of crab steering, so let's set all of the wheels pointing in the same direction. And then we can replicate that classic shifty sideways movement. At the front, the cab has opening doors and we're using the pointer that's supplied with the model to get it open. And having arrived on site and been able to get out of the cab, we can now set the crane up for operation. The two-stage metal outrigger beams pull out easily, and then we can lower the piston just by unscrewing in the usual way. The pads are supplied as separate parts, and they latch on over the end of the piston. To lock them in place, the tiny steel pins are provided, and they are an easy fit, perhaps too easy because they come out easily. To spread the load from the outriggers, we can use the plates provided. The outrigger system is strong enough to support the model wheels free. Raising the boom is easy and it goes up with a gentle caress. And you can lock it at any extension you want by tightening up the grub screw. To give the crane some lifting capacity we need to add some counterweight. And it's been nicely modelled because all of the parts are separate pieces. So with some care it would be possible to configure the counterweight in different ways. And that includes adding on cheek weights also. The lift rams are modelled as separate parts which press into holes. And as you can see that at the top that results in slots and you use those slots to connect the counterweight to the crane. One consequence of the way it's modelled is that the underside is perfectly smooth which means it can't really be posed properly on the carrier deck for self ballasting. So attaching the counterweight is the job of giant hand cranes. And you offer it up to the fixed rams on the body, and when it interlocks you slide it sideways to lock it. The system is a little bit fiddly at first, but once you get the hang of it, it's very secure. With the counterweight fully loaded, let's check the outriggers. And with the full load on, we can see they're not perfectly straight because of some movement in the connections. The telescopic boom sections have got locking points that are approximately 50%, 90% and 100%. And to extend the boom, you pull out the sections in the normal way. They were initially a little bit sticky on the review model, but once they get moving, they are smooth enough. Let's look at some other features on the model, and the crane cab can be tilted. The ram controlling it was very stiff, but it does mean it holds a pose. Also, the cab features an opening sliding door, and you need the plastic pointer to get it started. But once it starts, it slides easily enough. Another feature we saw earlier was the removable engine covers. And when they're lifted up, you can see a detailed engine underneath. A model like this really needs to be displayed lifting something. And here it is working as an assist crane, attaching the fly jib onto the big XCA1200 mobile crane. That's a model we've reviewed previously. To extend the reach of the crane, there's a two piece fly jib that you can add. And if you want the maximum length, you join the two pieces together and secure them with tiny nuts and bolts. Now tools are provided to help with the task, but in reality for this connection things are very tight for space. So the bolts can be inserted easily enough from outside, but getting the nuts on is a more difficult problem. A special tool is provided to hold the nuts, but really you can only fit them in on one side because there's not enough space to get the tool and the nut in. And with the job done you can see how tight it is. To fit the fly jib on, it's positioned over the attachment lugs on the boom head. And in this respect the fit of parts is very good. So much so that it stays on well even without the nuts and bolts. Space to fit the nuts is again difficult, so here we've just inserted the bolts. The advantage of this fly jib is that it's controlled by a hydraulic ram, so you can set an offset angle. Models of cranes for Chinese companies like XEMG have improved a lot in recent times. The XCA220 by Yagao continues that trend, 
and it's a very nice combination of high detail and functionality. It's been well engineered and looks impressive, and overall it's good enough to be rated excellent.